Hey, and welcome back to another episode of Tea Time with Mother and Crone. We've got a lot to talk about. A lot of things have happened. Um, we got a lot of stuff that's upcoming. Um, so I'm going to bring on my cohort in crime, my Linda, and she's going to tell us what we have in our cup this week. Um, I'm a little scared. What is it? So this week is a little different. So instead of herbs and flowers, we're doing birch as in the tree. <laughs> So birch bark is actually um, something, another thing, like we always talk about medicinal and magical. Um, and believe it or not, you can use it for different things. So um, as far as now you can make a birch leaf oil or a salve, um, it is good for inflammation and pain, which <laughs> I need that. Yeah. Um, and also, let me just go down. You can use it as a tea in a shot form. So you can take it like a shot of tea. Um, That's so like our game. <laughs> I know. And we have a great game with this one. Yeah. And it, so it has a, it has, it's said to have like a tasty wintergreen sort of taste um, or flavor, minty flavor. Actually, um, that might be the leaf taste. Yeah, 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 it is. Leaves, yeah. yeah, so you can use the leaves as well. But um, some information. So the bark has many uses in survival from paper to tanning leather, which I thought was interesting because um, I never knew that. Um, but you can also use it medicinally. So you can use the bark and leaves. Um, and they have, I don't know if I can blow this up, but it's common. So you'll see like this is the leaf of a birch so it's almost it's a heart common. shape yep oh, yep exactly almost a heart shaped and then it has you'll see these buds mm -hmm. on the ends and then of course if you're not familiar with what they look like they're the little whitish gray looking ones i don't know how clear that is with yeah my that's life. real clear that's a good great picture actually it's real okay. clear because you can see it. They're like the silver gray colored. Um, right. It was one of the first tree that my Cub Scouts ever learned because they went foraging because in Cub Scouts, we take the boys out and they do the foresty thing and mm -hmm. they have to find the leaves of different trees and explain what they are. And the easiest way for them to do that was I sent them out for birch leaves and they bring back a birch twig. And if you pound it, Mm. Oil it, add a little sugar to it. You got to be careful because it does contain uh, a little bit of a poison to it. And it's it's not strong, but if you drink too much of it, it can upset your stomach. And it actually is where we get birch beer from. Oh, So nice. we would make a little root beer, you know, a little saucepan, you know, boil the leaf a little bit. Just so the boys got a, an idea. And once they all had a little, like, tablespoon of it, they were like, oh. So every time we went camping, the boys knew exactly where the birch trees were. Man, they right. found them every time because they make them birch beer, and that's where you get it from. So it, it's actually a drink. Now, of course, when you buy it in the store, it's been, you know, pasteurized and cleaned up and all. But if you do it camping-wise, I will tell you not to drink more than, like, an ounce or two. But it's a great thing if you go camping to pound the, you know, you, you pound one of those limbs a little bit, you know, a small limb, and you pound it, and then you boil it, and add a little sugar to it. It does have the flavor of a birch like a birch beer. That's interesting. The boys and, get a kick out of it. Yeah. And you guys will have to, uh, don't mind me. I'll be adjusting because I'm going through some really bad back issues right now. Um, so I apologize. Now, um, some varieties of the birch do not have peeling bark, but the vast majority of it does. So instead, so you'll have some that you'll know they'll chip off. I think it's like a pine tree. That's like that. They'll chip off like, those big chunks of it almost looks like mulch um and then but these are kind of appealing now um the birch leaves buds and bark have an, uh, powerful anti-inflammatory properties so i need i need that um need it's that. also yeah also said to be good for cramps skin conditions and gout 
Oh, I should have known that a few months ago. I know. I thought about that when I read this. I was like, damn. <laughs> and it's also good as a diuretic and cleansing the kidneys and treating you, uh, urinary tract infections, UTIs. Um, topically, it is said to help eczema, muscle aches, and arthritis. Oh, shit. And That's good stuff in it then. I just thought it was for birch beer to drink. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know it was all this good stuff. I know. And then it also says young shoots and leaves are known to have a laxative effect and can be used to make a wound poultice or, um, or salve. In folk medicine, birch is also among several trees said to help with hair loss. Huh, that's interesting. Um, and then the other thing it says, added bonus, birches are also common hosts for incredibly versatile medicinal mushrooms like the birch bracket polypore, which mm, it doesn't have a picture of it. At first, I thought it was a... Um, the mushroom can be used as a bandage, immune boosting tea, or as a powerful salve ingredient. Now it does uh, say main complication risk. So again, as we always say, check with your doctor medications that you're uh, taking. So it says while generally safe, birch may increase sodium retention. So use caution if you have high blood pressure. Um, and and that's the that's some of the main things with birch now you have some cool magical information and i have a few magical things that i'll chime in with but i want you to talk about what you have over there oh well, i fell back to my mainstay poor scott i've used scott so much that scott's falling apart i've actually had to take pages <laughs> in my book but that's okay um it that was just interesting loved. it's loved it is more than loved i thought it was interesting because it's used for protection exorcism and purification which mm -hmm. all three tie together but right. this is this is cute that you really get mad at your spouse this is a great one birch twigs have been used to exercise spheres by gently striking possessed people not gently striking well so you know you, gentle gently can be you know interpreted right right mm. okay <laughs> depends on that's all i'm thinking of because you know, you're, ah, ah, there you go. Um, the tree is used for protection and Russians, this is interesting, used to hang a red ribbon around the stem of the birch to rid themselves of the evil eye. Now, Italians, honestly, the evil eye is Italian because you can actually buy the gold little hands that go like this. Yeah. And that's protection against the evil eye in Italy, along oh. with the, um, the horn of plenty. So uh, you'll see a lot of Italians wearing a necklace with a a symbol like this and a horn of plenty. So it's to get wow. rid of the evil eye. So I thought that was interesting. And the strangest thing was it says traditional broom of witches was made of birch twigs. Woo. I always thought it was cinnamon because mine's cinnamon. This one's cinnamon here. And I thought it was other, other trees like, you know, elder or something. I didn't know birch was in there. Um, and it's, that might be because it's the cinnamon might just be because it smells delicious. It smells delicious. I know. Um, it also says that cradles, a child's cradle was once manufactured from birch wood to protect the helpless charges. I thought that was so special. That is. Um, it is. That, that's well, that's a mom thing. We, we get into that. Um, it is feminine. And I love the other folk name is Lady of the Woods. I love yeah, that. It's like a song, Lady of but the But you Woods. know, also, like with the picture that I showed, like a birch forest, I mean, that looks pretty damn magical to me. It, you know, that silver bark, when it catches in like it early does. morning light or evening light, I, I used to do a lot of camping with scouts. That is the most beautiful thing because it like almost bounces off and reflects it. So it gives yeah. it like this glow and it, it, it's really magical, but I just thought that was cool. And of course the deity is one that you would love. It's Thor. So you're right there, girl. Yeah. yeah. Planet is Venus. Element is water. But um, I was really surprised to hear about, you know, the Russians using it for the evil eye to hang a red ribbon. I don't, if anybody knows the correspondence there between a red ribbon and the birch tree, like why? That would be really cool to know if somebody could let us know. Um, yeah. 
because color always has something to do with it as well as you know why a birch tree because it's silver and the red and the silver go together or whatever right but, um that was pretty cool and i was like especially for the cradles i was like oh there goes i know much. but is- uh, poor old scott gets used to death um everybody asks what book standard books you have in your library if you don't have a scott cunningham i i can't call you a witch i'm sorry because i yeah have, i mean he's definitely books that scott and now i understand those three books come in one book um somebody's yeah. telling me that all three of them now you can get in in one edition sorry um, this is live so i'm having to <laughs> you're gonna see us live you're gonna see us make mistakes so i have this poor thing is it's 1985 i mean i have it's torn and everything but um this one the um witches herbs brews and oils and the crystals evidently you can get all three in one book so wow. yeah somebody told me they had it the other day i was on another zoom and they're like oh yeah i have all three in one i was like really because i mean cool. we won't discuss how many years ago I bought this book. It's been used and abused and loved. Um, any book that's not got, you know, a few pages messed up in it has never been used. And seriously, if you do not have Scott Cunningham, you need to get it. It's okay. kind of like Ray Buckland's big blue book. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it's, you know, you have it because that's where you find everything. But no, that's pretty interesting about the birch. And like I said, if you live on the eastern seaboard, uh, up north, they're very prevalent. Um, Maryland and up, you'll find birch trees everywhere. Um, they actually, they have a sweet smell to them. And if you walk past them, they have a musky smell to them. Yeah. It's kind now, of I had, I had a few things I wanted to, um, that I found as well. Um, so as one of the first plants to sprout new leaves in the spring, birch has been long associated with renewal. Um, that makes sense if it's a first one, yeah. Yeah. Um, it says birch is extremely important in Celtic, European, and Native American folklore. Birch is linked to the Norse rune Burkana, and I'm probably saying that wrong, B-E-R-K-A-N-A. You know I always have to give <laughs> that disclaimer. And also to... Beith, B-E-I-T-H, the first letter of the Ogham alphabet. Um, so, so I thought that was interesting. Now, birch trees are found all over the northern hemisphere, thriving in all but the coldest areas of the north. Most people recognize birch, as we talked about already, the white papery bark, grayish brown. You know, it's kind of like that silvery, you know. When you see it, you know it. It's kind of like that yes. it stands right out. And it always looks like to me, I always thought that these kind of look like eyeballs. <laughs> like, they do. And I mean, see them at night. Yeah. Yeah, they can be a little uh, disturbing. Now it says, where did I find it? So, okay. Birch, we already said, is a natural diuretic. Um, birch extract has a fresh wintergreen aroma and was once a popular flavoring for chewing gum and soft drinks yep birch beer yep and then it says ask your grandpa now birch sap is a reliable winter food source for native peoples of siberia and north america so i thought that was interesting hmm. um Birch is also prized as firewood because it burns without popping, even when harvested fresh. Um, Interesting. It doesn't pop then, huh? Yeah, it says doesn't pop. It says um, you can obtain birch in many different forms from freshly gathered twigs to firewood to fine furniture, veneers. Um, now it says you can also get them from natural health suppliers um and you can also get birch paper so what we talked about the cool thing with the birch is that it's sort of that peel away bark and you can use the birch paper is uh strips of dried bark and so it says you can use it um it's valuable for spellcraft so i was gonna say that would make an amazing thing to write a spell on and then burn it yes like your full moon um intentions too um 
It says birch essential oil is also available and is usually steam distilled from the pulverized bark. Um, synthetic birch fragrances rarely get it right. So again, it smells like a minty mouthwash, sandalwood, or tar. Oh, you froze again. Um, I'm always freezing. <laughs> but I can hear. Oh, now I see you. See, it's live. Just roll with it. Live. Go, roll with the punches. Um, and I just wanted to touch on a couple other things. The birch trees are considered pioneer species, rapidly colonizing land um, that has been leveled by fire or clear cutting. And now in magic, it's traditionally used for, we all already talked about the witch's besom, but also for Beltane fires, maples, and yule logs. Yule logs, really? We're getting there. Yeah. yeah. And then um, there's also a traditional Wiccan rhyme, birch into the fire goes in sign of what the lady knows. So that goes back to the lady of the woods thing. Um, and then we already talked about now, it's also linked not only Thor, but also linked to the goddesses Frigg, Freya, Adana, and Hel. Which hell, if those of you that don't know, is like the Norse Hecate. <laughs> so basically, she, yeah. The goddess of the underworld, she's like half dead and half alive. So you'll see her kind of like dark. Look it up. H E L. Um and then psychic protection, uh, which we talked about. The um it offers courage and protection. And so we talked about that. Now, I thought this was interesting that you would find, or you would find interesting. Now. <laughs> it's also related to the white maidens, AKA fairies Ooh. that haunt the forests of Germanic folklore. The birch spirit is a larger, older being that even these great ladies, um, Older being even even older than the than the fairies. Oh, um, wow. Nor does birch easily fit into any one of the Wiccan concepts of the goddess. So it's all over. Now, birch has the fresh innocence of the maiden, the generosity of the mother, and the silent courage of the crone. There we go. It has a deep, long relationship with humans as a provider and guide. So I thought that was pretty cool. It's I mean, it's interesting that they use it for Yule. Yeah. Um, I mean, it makes sense when you think about it, though, but sometimes you just don't think about things <laughs> until. Well, uh, seriously, when you start burning wood, if anybody has done campfires, seriously, different woods smell different when you when you're burning them out in your backyard you'll you'll get a like if you throw a cedar log in there you know you've got cedar but right. birch does have a very specific scent when it's burning like that and it's it's a refreshing scent it's not one of those um overcoming it's just light and it's refreshing if you smell it burning it's yeah right. and but i never knew it was used for yule log it, hmm, have yeah and what it log. says is so the last thing about the yule log part because it's way down in a different section it says a birch log burned at yule will bring luck, luck and prosperity for the arrival of spring and then if that's not practical apartment dwelling witches can use a white candle wrapped in birch paper or scented with birch you know, even if you did your your log, like a lot of us do the the log that we put on display, we're right. not going to burn it. But you know that white birch, because it's white, the bark is white, and when you start to decorate it with some green and some know. and red candles, that that it's really outstanding. Yeah. So that is birch. I'm telling you that's something you might want to think about for yule to do your yule log with that would be really cool even if you don't burn it if you just make it to sit in your house because I I have a, a log I bring out every year and I decorate you know yeah. I don't necessarily burn it I'm in Florida it's like 
I well, know. I'm on the West Coast, so trust well, me. Well, I was going to say, I'm excited. Oh, my gosh. it was. I don't know how it was over there today, but it was such beautiful weather this morning. It felt like a fall. Like, it was windy and low 70s. It was beautiful. Well, it was 97 here, and it was pouring down to rain all day. We had thunderstorms all day. We had that. That was us yesterday and the day before <laughs> yeah uh, being on the west coast and east coast is like being in two parts of the country even though we're it, four it, hours apart it messes with me every time <laughs> i know it's just so weird because i'm over here and i'll be telling her oh my god it's 900 degrees and she's like i'm freezing and i'm like i know Granted, i have not said i was freezing anytime recently but come winter time i will and your winter, I don't really have. You guys get much colder because of the Atlantic Ocean. I get that. We really, I think our winter last year lasted two or three days. Oh, and man. Yeah, yeah we I mean, done. there was a period, I think, in January, we were, like, in the 30s for a week. Yeah, you guys got really cold. Um, mm -hmm. We, shoot, um, last year, November, we were at the, uh, actually, in the bay we were swimming uh -huh. we were in the gulf so i uh, it's 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 unbelievable we're just a few hours apart but because of the gulf and the atlantic we get completely different weather conditions i know it's so bizarre but yeah hey, really. um but that was really interesting about birch and um well like so i said we i didn't know anything about that i know the birch beer because doing the scouts you know that was you have to keep the kids interested and one way to keep them interested is if you do something like make something they can eat or or do they remember it because after right. that that group of boys told the next group of boys oh wait till she takes you out you know and you get to make root beer and the boys are yeah. like how do we make root beer and it was like okay you gotta go find a birch tree and you know and they come back with it and for years after that they remember it um i just thought it was a cool thing i didn't know it had all that stuff going with it but I may have to get a birch also, log for Yule. I know. And also for the um, for the scent profile, it's wintergreen. And then root beer was actually one of the things it said. Well, I can tell you when you make the birch beer, you, we smashed, you know, and did it and boiled it. Um, it really tasted. It was like amazing. It had this root beer taste to it. And the boys were just like they were beside themselves. They thought it was the greatest thing in the world. You just yeah. have to be really careful because you, it's not pasteurized. It's, I mean, when you do this, you, you do it. So each one takes like a little sip and that's it. Um, mm -hmm. You're not going to sit there and drink it, but it, it is a fun thing to do. And trying to teach your children nature and it's nature isn't like when I was growing up, everybody knew stuff like that, but right. we don't do it anymore. So kids don't know this, but you know, to teach them the different trees and the different stuff like that. You you try to tie in all sorts of craziness. Like there's a pine tree that has like three pine needles on each little piece. And it's called a lop lolly pine, lop lolly pine. It's three words. And that's how we taught the boys to find the lop lolly pine tree. Wow. And that they would go into the forest because you have to to know different things boy scouts is more about being on your own in the environment and surviving so right. you learn these survival skills and one of them is learning the different trees because again with the birch tree uh, if you're in trouble it can help you you know with wounds it can help you um mm -hmm. with all sorts of things you know get rid of inflammation and all this years ago when i was a kid growing up we all knew this stuff i mean right part of general knowledge but it's like everybody moved to cities and you didn't have trees. So, or out, you know, in nature, I grew up on a farm. So, I mean, you know. Right, right. You had yeah, everything there. Don't. Yeah, you don't see it. You don't see it as often in like, well, you know, here. I mean, it's building all the time. Right. And a lot of places like state forests and stuff, when you go in, you cannot, you know, cut on a tree. You can't do any of that. So, you have to find fallen trees you got to be careful there because they got fungus growing on them is fungus edible you know it's yeah. all this craziness so it's not like it was years ago but to learn i mean we're at a point now because trust me COVID taught us a lot of things oops melinda i lost you 
if you could unmute there you go you're back okay but if like COVID has taught us we need to start doing a little bit of our own gardening and a little bit of our own growing a little bit of our own food and just becoming more self-reliant than we were because we're finding out the people that we needed the most were the frontline workers um the grocery yeah. store clerks and that kind of stuff so if you start learning a little bit now you can teach your kids a little bit so survival skills aren't all that bad i mean you don't have to go whole hog and have you know 10 years worth of survival crap in your basement no. but you can learn a few little things and remember a few little things um if you go on nature walks with your kids knowing a little bit of stuff like that yeah. um, first of all you look absolutely super mom because you could say oh yeah that's a lock lolly pine honey it's got three three things in each one you know, and you go on and these kids are thinking wow mom knows everything so yeah kudos mom but just learning this kind of stuff it gives us a fallback you know if you really get yeah. desperate you have something to fall back on absolutely and i'm a big proponent of at least it, you might not do it every day but I grew up on a farm. Am I growing stuff? I'm growing rosemary out here now like crazy. But am I growing much? No, I'm just doing a little bit of gardening here and there. Could I? Oh, hell yeah. Because I knew how to do it. So I, if I had to, I could take my butt outside and I could grow it. So it's that kind of thing. And I think that's great that we're all getting back to that a little bit more. During World War II, that was the big thing was to have a victory garden. And I grew up, my dad was in Korea. And again, it was another big thing to have your own little garden. I grew up, even though I grew up on a farm, when I moved to suburbia, I took a piece of my backyard and I grew my tomatoes, my peppers, and I even had corn growing in my backyard. My neighbor thought I was nuts because they'd never seen it before. It would be cool to have corn. Now, speaking of all of this harvesting and corn and camping, we are so the topic for today is we're going to talk about maybon so maybon maybon um we are going to possibly have a guest host next week so instead of talking instead of spanning it over a couple of weeks like we originally planned we're just gonna um talk about it so you can get kind of a jump start because it'll be here before you know it oh the my goodness the 22nd this year so this whole uh, year has just went i'm I like know. wow where do you go and um and yeah. like you said i think you know it it would easily be considered the um which is thanksgiving <laughs> it's called the witch's thanksgiving it's our second harvest festival so this is uh, a time and if you harvest i grew up in west virginia so i was a little bit more north um this is the harvest where you start bringing in a lot of the vegetables the green beans are coming in mm -hmm. um your second corn is coming in your second wheat and barley are coming in and your squash is starting to come in it might not be in yet but it's starting to get there your early squash your bigger squash like your pumpkins and all will probably be you know next month but you'll still get a lot of that in there so it's yeah. our second harvest festival and a lot of people are like well you know people forget about maybon and I, I feel really bad because to me it's a harvest time so that's a big time if you grow up on a farm there are certain times of the year when everybody gets together and helps everybody else out yeah. so this would be the time when we would be going through for the second um hay harvest for the cattle Mm -hmm. So this is when we're taking the hay in, we're baling it up and we're throwing it up in the loft because we're getting ready for winter. So we right. do it now. And our last one, we barely, rarely, rarely got much in October. So September was our big time. Mm -hmm. So this is when all the neighbors would get together and you would go to this farm, go to this farm, go to this farm. So you might hit three farms in a week. Right. And we would be they would cut it down but i would be i usually i drove the truck they would throw the hay hail bales in the back and we you know take it up and throw it up in the loft but harvest is very important because it's not just physical but the symbolic of harvest we're starting right. to prepare ourselves for winter coming in 
So mm -hmm. we're kind of getting rid of the stuff we really are not going to, it's not going to make it through to winter. Right, right. So this is a good time to go through and maybe do a little bit of fall cleaning rather than spring cleaning. Yes, and I'm glad you brought that up because I um, I do that as well. Because And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. So if those of us witches that do truly consider Samhain our new year um, rather than January 1st, that's a perfect – and of course I still, you know – celebrate the new year because it's a new calendar month but um spiritually speaking it's a great idea to do that cleansing and declutter and sort of ring in the new year so to speak you know with Samhain being the next holiday and that's you know a holiday that where we honor our ancestors so it kind of is such a great beginning to kind of you know declutter Right. And this is a time of year where you've started, the kids have started back to school. Usually by September, they're all in school if they're going to go. And now you can start actually going through some of the clothes they couldn't wear from the summertime. And you know, they're not going to make it till next year because I don't know any kid who doesn't grow from year to year. So unless no. you're keeping it for the next one in line, you've got clothes to get rid of. Um, and this is a great time. The temperature starts to drop a little bit where you can actually go outside and not die. Um, so yeah. this is a great time where people start to have their yard sales. Um, and this is times when you'll notice that uh, the thrift stores are getting pretty full because you've gone through the kids clothes for school and they couldn't and fit in half the stuff from last year. I have to do that. Oh my gosh. I'm dreading. Oh, I know. And that used to be my, have, like, oh. yeah. And I have two and I'm just like, Oh, I and know. Fiona's, Fiona's is worse because she's smaller, so she has more clothes, you know what I mean? And it's like, and, but most of them are, she's way outgrown because she's growing like a weed. And now, mm -hmm. this is a really good time because we witches need to start conserving, and this is a really good time to do meetups, to switch off clothes. If you know somebody's got one younger than you or smaller than you, you can say, here, four million clothes. Um, just, you know, to, it's sharing the wealth is how I look at it. Um, and your yard sales, this is a great time. It's cool enough now. It's going to start cooling down to where you can have those weekend yard sales. And which is yard sales are almost as good as thrift stores. I know. And I have had so many friends that say, oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe the things I found. And I'm like, man, I... I cannot believe, and I love yard sales, but it's like, for some reason, like, I don't ever think about it. And I, cause I never, ever have cash on me. So it's just like, and of course I could just go to the ATM, but it's just like, I see the signs, but it's like, I don't have cash. And I never think about just, Hey, I'm going to go get cash and we're just going to drive around and look for you. You know what I mean? Well, and a I, lot of communities have, I love the big community art sales. Like when the yeah. whole block does it, that's mm -hmm. when you go, cause that's when you can get your good buys. But yeah, with, yeah, you don't see that a ton here. No, I, that's <laughs> more, that's a Northern thing. I think yeah, where, yeah. Oh, the neighborhood does it, but now one of is coming up and it's our Thanksgiving. So what are we giving yeah. thanks for? Exactly. Now, before we get into that, so I wanted to touch on the story of Mabon, and it's just a short little thing. So again, as you said, it's the second harvest in Thanksgiving. So the story is the goddess as harvest queen, radiant with plenty, um, light and dark are in balance, and the light is defeated as the horned god descends into the underworld. The god dies with the cutting of the last grain. And I wanted to include that because we had talked about before, you know, the story, and we'll talk about it around Yule uh, with the Holly King and things like that and the Horned God and all the different Holly King things. and the Oak King. Yeah. Yeah. Oak King. Um, so I, I just wanted to include that story because um, it kind of... This is one of those holidays that kind of gets brushed under the rug. You don't see a lot of yeah. witches participate. Everybody comes out at Samhain. Let, let's be perfectly honest. Samhain, everybody is there. Yeah. Um, there are certain holidays where it's, everybody's there, and then there's some that just kind of slide in and slide out. And this is one of those that slides in and slides out. 
Mm -hmm. If you want to make it your Thanksgiving, that's awesome. Thanksgiving is two more months away. So you got plenty of time between the two that you can make it two separate holidays. It's not like it's going right into Thanksgiving. Right. Um, and this is time where don't do a turkey, do whatever local is. Um, mm -hmm. Get your go to the local farmers markets because they're out and around. Um, get you some of the fresh stuff that's out now. You, you're going to find a few gourds, not a whole lot yet because it's not got there yet. But you'll find some of your squash, the zucchinis out, you know. Um, yeah, hit course. the farmer's market because oh, yeah. that's going to be seasonal. And, you know, that's another thing. So um, some people, and I don't know if I have enough discipline, but it would certainly be smart um, because it's not only a way to be frugal, but if you do seasonal eating, you it's easier to eat more organically that way because you're not having to pay like the prices that are coming out of you know the how it's like price you know how the price like if you buy things out of season it's nuts like it's so expensive oh, yeah even down but, here, it surprised me because i thought florida being warm would have fresh vegetables year round yeah and so if you can eat seasonably and you know this time of year is a great time where you want to get into like those soups and those stews and the different things, um, you know, kind of getting you into that fall feel, um, even though it's hot as hell still, still here in Florida, <laughs> you know. Well, the too, your kids distance. have gone back to school. You're a little bit more now in a groove. Think right. about it. Kids are back in. You're getting your your game plan out now. You you figured out the bus schedules and you figured out the pick up and drop off lines and all mm -hmm. that other stuff. So if you don't want to quote unquote be Thanksgiving, just make it. You finally survived to this point. You know this this is you finally got your game on. So let's celebrate the fact that okay we're back in school and things are back on track again. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a Thanksgiving. Um, just you cook a few vegetables or, uh, have a few things that are seasonal. Yes. Take a walk in the woods, walk around the neighborhood. If nothing else, walk your dog. Cause goodness gracious knows your dog can use it. Um, get out there. Uh, and I love my roommate and I, she and I will sit on our, we have a front porch and we live in an older section of Florida. So most of the people are our age and they'll walk their dogs up and down. We always keep milk bones for our neighbor's dogs and cat treats for the neighbor's cats. We don't have any animals, yeah. <laughs> but they all stop at our house because the dogs know that we, they're going to get a treat if they come to our house. But this is a time where we connect, reconnect with yeah. your neighborhood. It's not 900 degrees outside. You can walk your dog, walk around the neighborhood. Yeah, it is starting to get cooler. Like I said today, I was so surprised this morning. Oh, it was one of those I got to be. I got to sit on the porch, and the wind was just whipping. But it was not like that hot, sticky wind. It was, it was cool because it was like low seventies. Oh, wow. Now, talking about um, so things like you had mentioned, how do we show things? So I wanted to touch on different things you can do um you can reflect and give thanks for manifest for manifesting um of course people in general just like you would a traditional thanksgiving but some other ideas that you can do for maybon um you can get and i actually do this every year with the kids you can get crunchy leaves for the for your altar like the big you know maple leaf type things yeah. and that's what I do. Like when, when fall comes around, I will look, sometimes I'll see those great big, um, leaves that have fallen on the floor, like the oak leaves that are the size of your hand. Um, so sometimes I'll find some really cool looking leaves. Or if I find like a, you know, in Florida, we don't get the colors like up North. Um, so it's usually just green 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 all year round and there's certain species of trees that will turn like an orangish but we don't get the super bright yellows and the super bright reds and the super bright oranges um because i love that stuff it's so beautiful but we do not get that here um that, that, this is the season this is the only time i get homesick yeah oh my God. i miss yeah. my mountains this time of year um 
And it, it's true. It, they're beautiful this time of year. But you yeah. know what? These are perfect teaching times. Um, with your kids, you pick up a leaf. What leaf is this? What tree does it belong to? Um, little things like the birch. It's, we just talked about it being silver and it having this scent. And it looks like this. Take your kids out, find a birch tree. And not only that, um, it collecting acorns um, and not acorn of the year. Yeah. You find the first acorn you find, you put it in your pocket, and it's to remind you from that little acorn a mighty oak tree grows. So you keep it. Now you can plant it and grow your tree, or you can hold on to it and just keep thinking about growing your own prosperity. So oh. that is a way you grab that oak that little acorn because it came from the oak tree and you hold on to it oh, in your pocketbook and you just remind yourself that you know what I've planted this year what am I planting especially with your kids this is the harvest so we're, we're bringing in the food now we're bringing in the stuff we're not planting necessarily this time of year so this is when you need to start with your kids because you've got to build into Samhain you don't want to spring Samhain on your kids and say all of a sudden, okay, we're going to celebrate the dead because they're going to be like, ah, what happened? But you right. start explaining how the seasons wane and how things are slowing down. Even in the South, you'll find that there are, we do have seasonal changes. It right. does get cooler here a little bit. It goes from hell to mid hell. <laughs> and then we right. go to upper hell. Um, yeah. no, <laughs> I always think about really that. Really is um you can do you can make um your own smudge sticks and use orange peel and cinnamon um so if you wanted to couple that with sage or with like a little rope of sweet grass you could do that um it's the season for you know baking those warm pies and starting that cider you know the hot apple cider oh yeah um, that cider soon oh um, but this is a time where you start teaching your children about the cycle, mm -hmm. uh, about life and death, um, even with the younger kids, because they all get pets and they all die. Even right. goldfish, you know, your first pet most kid has is a goldfish or some kind of fish. So this gives you the chance to talk with them. It also gives you a chance to start prepping for Samhain. So you have this holiday, you're thankful for this. You might bring up, you're thankful for your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents, you know, whoever came to this country to start your lineage here. Right. So you kind of preface it with that and you kind of build into that. You don't want to hit a kid all of a sudden with like, yeah, we're going to celebrate everybody that died because some kids just can't handle that. No. Yeah. You definitely yeah. want it's age appropriate because right and you build into it because if you start talking at thanksgiving about what you're thankful for my mom and my dad well at my age obviously my parents are dead so you know the children my grandchildren some of them did not meet my parents which would be their great grandparents so you give them a little info about who they are where they came from maybe a picture or two you know yeah. um i went back to west virginia couple months ago a month ago sounds like forever um and I got a picture of my great-grandparents on my yeah. grandmother's side my father's mother's side and it was really cool I now have a picture of my great-grandma and my great-grandfather and I never met them but I got their picture hanging up on the wall now and it was kind of very special because that's who I came from so this is a time to do that with your kids um you're prefacing it to get to Samhain so that when you hit Samhain and you start celebrating your ancestors then they understand it most yes, cultures there's very few there's one culture i know that does it the, the latino culture celebrates the day of the dead and they go to the grave sites mm -hmm. if any of you guys want to understand it i recommend watching coco on it's a pixar yes it's a cute it's on disney uh, i think it's disney plus yeah, opinion. everything's on Disney. I mean, if you have a Disney Plus, yeah, it is. Yeah, whatever. It's well worth watching no matter what your ethnic background is because it explains how you keep ancestries alive. And I, I watched it with my nephew. My nephew's much younger. He's about nine. And he had to watch this show. And I was like, really? Um, 
Okay, because I watched. I still seen it, but I know it's cute. And like when we did the Disney on Ice, Coco came out, and it was really well, you know. But it I haven't really actually goes seen. into a lot more detail than you realize. Now he didn't pick up on a lot of it, but I did. And when he had questions, that's when you start, you know, explaining things to them. Now, our ethnic background is not Latino. Okay, right. uh, his isn't, mine isn't. But watching that, I was able to tie in Samhain with him. That's really cool. And he thought, and that was like two months ago, he thought that was the greatest thing. So um, with, with the COVID scare, I had his older brother here for a week and a half, almost right. well, for two weeks because of the COVID thing going on. So I had his older brother here. So he said to me, he said, well, are we going to watch Coco for Samhain? Ooh. Um, yes. Cool that brought up. But it gives you the explanation that if you don't keep the ancestors alive and mm -hmm. talk about them, they do disappear. Now, of course, it's well, much more prevalent on the movie screen how it happens. Yeah. But in reality, if you don't talk about your ancestors and you don't celebrate your Thanksgivings and stuff like that, you do lose track of that. Who are you? Who do you belong to? You really do. You really do. Um, and I, there was a couple other things that I wanted to touch because I did find some cool things. Now, some other activities that you can do, um, like we said, you can do a th perform a Thanksgiving ritual. So you can do that, of course, to, you know, deity, but you can also include people that you want to do. Um, you can meditate and reflect about the things and people that you have in your life, uh, j just like we went over. Um, and it's also a good time to release things. So just like we talked about the the decluttering, um, it's a good time to release what doesn't serve you. So, you know, good time to do shadow work as we're starting to kind of wind down. Like winter is really good time for that. A lot of people are depressed and down. You know, it has that stereotype of winter, you know, the winter blues. But it's a really good time to take the opportunity to tap in the shadow work, especially like around Samhain and things like that. Um, oh, and it even says here the next one, reflect about closing cycles, death and how everything has an end and that is perfectly normal. So try to make yourself comfortable with that if you're not already. Um, and then you can, like you said, walk in the woods, um, start decorating for fall. Um, so start like putting your fall type of stuff out just to sort of get that energy going. Now, um, I also wanted to, so for recipes, we talked about the fruit pie. You could do like a fruit cake that has like the fruit and the nuts, like that would be a perfect thing. Um, also candied almonds. Um, that was a, that was an idea and sauteed apples. There's an apple and butternut squash recipe that mm. I guarantee you, if you make it, and it's you just have to Google it, it's yeah. butternut squash, and it's apples and brown sugar and butter, and you bake it, and it's almost like an apple pie, but you mm. have squash in it. And since it's butternut squash, it's really like a nutty flavor. And with the apples, oh, I made it, um, you can make it vegan if you don't use butter, you use, you know, other oils. But I made it, my um, late father-in-law, my late husband's father, they told him he needed to start eating more roughage, blah, 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 whatever. And they told right. him to try squash. And he went, yeah, that'll happen. Yeah. So I told him. Right my husband and I said let me make this and it was just it's almost like an apple pie and it is smells so good I actually served it as a dessert oh nice. I brought it out and I put it on the table like a dessert because it's the baked apples with the brown sugar and the cinnamon and all that good stuff nutmeg in it so yeah. everybody ate it like it was gone and everybody's like, oh, my God, that was so good. And my father-in-law says, well, I thought we were supposed to have squash tonight. And I said, you just ate two helpings of it. And he was like, yeah. what? And I said, that was butternut squash. Now, butternut squash is a pain to cut because it's. Sometimes it's, you got to trick them. 
Well, I didn't and know. It's like, a, it's like a weird, like, it's, it's like. It's got that weird shape. You know, it's it got, is. Like, but dunk a dunk on the bottom. A very, yeah, it's got hips like we do. Really right? hips. Butternut squash hips don't lie. <laughs> yeah, really. Use a really sharp knife because you're gonna have to cut it because it, it is have, major cutting. It took me forever to get this thing cut up. But I have the I was, problem with spaghetti squash. Oh, some of those spaghetti squashes are so damn thick. Yeah. I'm sorry, if you hear my cats hissing and fighting with each other. Um, there's a lot you can do. I mean, this is a time of year where you need to start um, with your kids, start looking at like a lot of children. I grew up on a farm, so we knew all about the cycles because we knew we had to plant, we had to bring the you know, crops in, blah, blah, blah. So we were on a cycle. We already knew it, but we didn't know it. So we knew, but we didn't know why we knew. This is right. a time where you really need to start um, if you're teaching your children to be little pagans. Um, yeah. Yeah, little heathens, you need to make sure that they start learning about cycles. And if a child, and it was really weird, I grew up on a farm during the summers and uh, when school wasn't in. I went to school in Baltimore, but I, I spent my summers in all in West Virginia. But in Baltimore, I noticed the kids took death and all really, really hard and didn't understand. Oh, yeah. I'm sitting here going, well, that's the way it is. Everybody dies because, but I grew up on a farm and that gave me the cycle. Well, and, and you were, ex it. right. And you were exposed to that. Yeah. And you didn't realize. Absolutely. And um, it gave me that edge. So when there was death, it was like, okay, that's fine because someone's coming behind it. Right. And when exactly. someone dies, someone's born and, and it's, it was really weird because I didn't take it as hard as everybody did. Like they lose their goldfish or something. They'd be like horrified. And we were like, okay, we'll bury it. I was like that over a gerbil. But I it was like, okay, we'll bury it out in the yard where we grow the tomatoes and it will help fertilize the tomatoes. So it wasn't a 21 flush salute. It was taking it out in the backyard and burying it with the tomatoes. So yeah. It, it was a whole different way of looking at things. And when yeah. you look back on life, if you do any history reading, you will see that those that have that exposure to mm -hmm. a cycle life more or less roll with the punches because it's like, okay, this isn't going to last forever. Life is a cycle. So if you're in a bad cycle, it'll flip to a new one and it'll be a good cycle for a while. You were never, you never felt like this was it. Yes. The next cycle was coming. So I grew up that way. So I didn't understand. And then when I started, you know, walking this path, I was like, oh my God, it all makes so much sense now. I know. But, but uh, now another thing, another thing you could do is rosemary honey shortbread. Hmm. Um, I found a recipe on Pinterest actually. And all it is, is um, two, well, we're not saying it's healthy. Let's just preface that. <laughs> two sticks of room temperature salted butter, a quarter cup of honey, two cups of flour, zest from one organic lemon or orange, one tablespoon of fresh minced rosemary, one pinch of dried lavender, well crumbled. Um, and you optional goodies, it says chocolate chips or jam for making thumbprints. So you can do like, have you ever seen those thumb prints? Yeah. Oh yeah. And then it says tasty flavors to consider blackberry, strawberry, blueberry, or even orange marmalade and lemon curd. Um, you want to add those after baking, but I thought that sounded really. Yummy. Well, you know, what's really good. If you grow rosemary and I've been telling everybody to put grow rosemary by your front door. I do. Mm -hmm. If you let it grow, my rosemary is about, I don't know, two foot tall right now. Lady Angela asked me if I would cut long sticks for her because she's going to take the leaves off of it, mm -hmm. soak them, and then you use them as skewers. And that rosemary will flavor whatever you put on it. So you put chicken and your mm -hmm. vegetables on the skewers, on the rosemary skewers, and cook it. I didn't even think about that. 
Well, she asked me specifically, so when I come down there in two weeks, I'm going to be chopping up my rosemary because it's, it's growing like you have to keep pinching it back or you end up with a tree. I've got trees now. So yeah. I'm going to cut her a whole bunch of them. But you turn it upside down, let the leaves fall off. You use them for whatever you cook with. I mean, gosh, we use rosemary oh, for yeah. everything. Or you use it in your magical herbs. I mean, just as good. Run over that. Check that episode out. Um, oh, and you can also yeah, do like a, with it. I know. And you can also do like a bean soup around this time of year. There's so many different things. And don't forget about pumpkin. You do not have to wait for Halloween or Samhain for pumpkin. That is. And those pumpkin seeds, you dry them out and roast them. I see you smiling. Yes. <laughs> oh, I've Every, done that one too. And Every. that is, they are really good. And when your kids, my children nowadays don't know where really food comes from. Um, right. I have a silly story about one of my son's girlfriends who I was cooking dinner one night and I thought, oh, well, I'll make chicken strips, you know, so I'm making chicken fingers. And she's like, I didn't know you could make those. Oh, wow. And it hit me because yeah. she had, her mother didn't really cook. Like yeah. homemade cook. She would buy this stuff and then just like heat it up kind of thing where I took the chicken breast and cut it and dipped it and rolled it in the, you know, breadcrumbs and fried it. Right. He didn't know where it came from. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, but you know, little things like that. And this is the time of year where you have a little bit of time. Oh, you know, yeah. It's where you can do this stuff and cook with the kids and have a great time. I mean, you make, you bring a pumpkin in and you just take those pumpkin seeds and lay it out on that little platter and you stick it in the oven. And goodness, at my house, I couldn't pull them out fast enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I love doing that with the pumpkin seeds. Um, I also wanted to touch on real quick, um, so some ideas for your Maven altar, uh, cornucopia, and we, we, that's a pretty easy standard one to do. And there, even if you, if you look online, there are all sorts of little different DIY craft cornucopia type things you can do with your kids. So that makes it even more fun. Um, Apples, squash, corn, pumpkins, uh, herbs, leaves, animal totems. Now, animals associated with Maybon are blackbirds, eagle, owl, salmon, stag, wild goose, and wolf. Um, the herbs are cinnamon, chamomile, marigold, oak leaves, rue, sage, thistle, rosemary, things like that. Um, and then the crystals are, I wanted to go over that because it also told a little bit about, okay, so clear quartz for clarity of outlook and optimism for the coming season. Amber, hold for reassurance and pro of prosperity and protection. Aquamarine, seek balance and harmony for this, um, at this transitional moment in the year, opal reflect on the sum reflect on the summer days and visualize what you would like to achieve in the autumn. And then there's two more adventuring, be mindful of the balance of male female energy acting with compassion. Now that goes right into the Thanksgiving and using a balance of you know male female energy we've talked about that before and we'll probably do a show in the future more about that because that i think that would be an interesting topic to go over um and then lastly citrine appreciate the abundance enjoyed in the longer days before and count your blessings you know if you are into candle making or if you're not and want to learn now is a great time to get those leaves Leaf rubbings are mm -hmm. so much fun, or pressing the leaves. I've been doing that since I was a kid. I love that. And you just get, and for those of you that don't know, you can just get a leaf, put it on a piece of paper, um, yeah. or excuse me, put the paper on top of the leaf, excuse me, and then you can get like a crayon and rub it, and you'll have a whole imprint of the leaf with all the veins and everything. 
And if you want to, when you do your candles, you can actually put those in your on the outside of the candle, not inside where it'll burn, but on the outside. And it looks they look really pretty. And any kind of leaf imprint is kind of nice. You know, if you do your pressings and this is you gather the last couple flowers. Now, this is great. You can gather your roses because this is the last time your roses are going to bloom. Right. You take those petals, those rose hips, you dry them or you eat them. You can make tea because we yeah. went over the rose hip tea and the rose petal tea. And now is the time when you can get those and dry them out. I mean, people don't think about it. You go out yeah. now and you get a rose. You can just lay it out and just let it dry out. I mean, it's it's not complicated. Just put it in a window and let the sun hit it. Yeah, absolutely. And um, before we wrap up, I just want to make sure that there was nothing I was missing um, because I found a few, like I said, I found a few interesting things, but I think I did everything. The last thing I wanted to touch on here was um an interesting story now i never heard this and this is story about the origin of the name uh maybun and and i like i said i never heard of this but it says the name maybun was coined for the festival during the 1970s um by aiden kelly and there's no evidence of the festival bearing this name before then Mabin is a Celtic god and often referred to as the child of light. He is the son of the earth, mother goddess, Mad Madron. Kelly took inspiration from classical mysteries, particularly the tale of Demeter and Persephone, and looked for a Celtic version. Mabin is stolen away from his mother at a young age, leaving her devastated, causing autumn and winter, and returns later with the help of Celtic hero, C U L W C H. I'm not even going to attempt that. <laughs> uh, leading to celebration, leading to spring and summer. Um, but I thought that was interesting. I never heard that version. I, yeah, I heard that one a long time ago. A lot of our holidays and a lot of our celebrations we try to take from history. But we have to remember most of our history is oral history, just like Native Americans. So this is the second harvest for most people we're gathering in. Now you got to remember Celtic people are up in England and their temperature is already starting to drop. So they're starting to get in their cooler span and that's why their harvest is going to be different than ours. But if you live in upper uh, the United States and in the upper states, you're going to start seeing where the temperature is really dropping and your crops are being brought in, that kind of thing. This is a great time for apples. Yes, and that's what I mentioned earlier, like the apple pie. Um, you can even do apple picking as like a part of your sort of maven, you know, we talked um, about the Yeah, this is a great time. I used to like to take my kids up to an orchard where you can pick your own apples and you bring them home. There's something about the fruit that's fresh that is grown organic it has a much better taste to it it may not look beautiful but boy when you put your mouth on it it's awesome um, yeah i'd rather have an old pitted apple than uh, a nice shiny one that has no flavor to it I am. So, and if you go around if you start looking your grocery stores are going to start carrying right now a lot of that stuff um this is a time where if you want to start looking at maybe drying your food for the winter, um, people will have dehydrators. This is a good time to start on that thing. Um, if you want to be a little bit more self-sufficient and have your, you know, stuff, your food at home kind of thing. Um, right. This is when it's cooler. I used to do a lot of canning and a lot of cooking and freezing this time of year when it mm -hmm. starts to get cooler because you have it not only just all winter, but you have it in the summer when it's too hot to stand there and can for 12 hours. Um, oh. Yeah, I hate canning. But this is a great time. Now you're looking at your berries and your fruits are coming in for the last time of the season. Jellies, jams, um, and if you are into making wine, this is a good time to get your fruit supplies for your wines. Absolutely. 
So there's um, a lot going on. It doesn't seem like it's a big holiday. It's not Samhain. It's not Yule. But it can be a holiday that you can prep yourself to start enjoying. Even if it's only just for that one day, you just take that one day out. The 22nd, I think, is in the middle of the week. It's like a Wednesday or a Tuesday. I, yeah, I think it is. I was looking the other day, but then I, I didn't. I have vacation from work, so I know. Because <laughs> yeah. I'll be going up north, actually. I'll be going up to South Carolina. Then you take pictures. Now is the time where, you know, you might want to celebrate that a little bit and think about what goes on and just preface, you know, your kids because this is the whole process that we're talking about. The other thing I really want to impress upon people are there are a lot of pagan prides. Um, pagan pride is usually September is pagan pride month. So there are tons of pagan pride. Some of them are online. I know Tennessee had theirs online last weekend. Uh, yeah. There's a lot. Jacksonville is actually having it in person, not this weekend, but the 19th. 19th of September. And it's outdoor. So you no, it's outdoor. So you, if you're in the Jacksonville area, you can jump on Jacksonville Pagan Pride online mm -hmm. and they'll give you all this stuff that's going on. But in your own local neighborhood, maybe this is a time where, okay, you want to do a little bit more, but maybe you don't really feel like Thanksgiving, but hey, go to a pagan pride. Uh, yeah. you, them, you can, if you can go in person, I'm always going to tell you in person is a lot more fun, but right. this is a time where you can start looking at your pagan um, prides going around. Um, there's a lot of concerts going on with the pagan prides because most of the pagan prides, like I know Jax has uh, Mama Gina. Mm -hmm. um, Cloud just got back, what was it, Philadelphia pagan pride? I think so. And then, Last um, weekend. yeah, um, and he's got something this weekend. Uh, is it New Jersey or is it New York? I don't know. He's got another one. I can't remember, but there's a lot of them going on. And this might be the time where, okay, let's go to a pagan pride and see what's going on. Um, yeah. if they're outdoors, you don't have to worry as much with the COVID because you're going to be outdoors. If you still feel you want to wear a mask, wear your mask. I'm going to, I'm a mandate mask person only because I cannot get the shot and I have underlying conditions. So I and still okay. going out with the pagan prides and enjoying the outdoors because it's going to be a little bit cooler. Yeah, I know. And it's under the bridge and on the river. It's going to be nice. Yeah, um, we, It's cool there because lot, the, two years ago when I went, it was nice and cool with that breeze coming in. But yeah. wherever you're at, check out your pay, your local Pagan Prides. They're online. Just key in the name of your city and Pagan Pride after it, and it will pop up. Yeah, and see what's going on near you. Now, I wanted to, so we're going to go ahead and wrap it up, unfortunately, because it, we always have so much fun. But um, I did want to go ahead and do our keyword of the week. Keyword, keyword. Oh, so, and we did send out our cup to... Who got it last time? Yes. Um, the name slips me at the moment, but I'm yes. I, I will double check with her and make sure she got it, but I did see that. Um, so whoever we announced was the winner last time, I'm so sorry the name escapes me because I'm visual and I'm – there were several, multiple people that emailed me last time, so I'm the winner escapes me at the moment, so I apologize. But um, the keyword of the week is Mabin. And you can email teatimemc at gmail.com. I had to think about that for a second. <laughs> and it's T-A-T-H-Y-M-E-M-C at gmail.com. Um, and, of course, the only requirement is that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the little bell so you can see when we're streaming live. And we also have a Facebook page. So you can also message us on Facebook, um, but email honestly is, is easier. Um, and I'll be you're in the Jacksonville app. area. Yeah. If you're in Jacksonville this weekend, stop by Pagan Pride. Cause we'll, yeah, be there. we'll be there. We will have our little booth and we're running a uh, kids workshop. So we're doing the kids workshop. So, mm -hmm. Hey, you want to learn how to do a workshop? Come and see us at Pagan yeah. Pride in Jacksonville. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We encourage you to come out. Um, please support your local pagans. 
Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of them out there. I know that there's a lot of music going on here lately. Uh, S.J. Tucker just took off with another album. Cloud just did another album. Yeah, there's I, lots of cool stuff going on. There's a lot going on in the pagan community. Now's the time to touch base. School started back in, so you're back into a routine. Take a little bit of time out and enjoy it. If nothing else, get out and just walk around the neighborhood and start to enjoy where you're at and what's going on in, in your neck of the woods. If yeah. you have information on different things that are happening in your neighborhood and you want to send it to us, we have no problems with listing it on our Facebook page and we'll, we'll announce it on our show. We don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Now, next week, we are going to have a special guest on our show and we're going to try and do a special guest once a month. So uh, we're not going to let anything out. We're going to make you come and watch to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we've got some interesting guests lined up. And if you want to see somebody, you want to talk about somebody, there's somebody you're interested in, shoot us a line and we'll try and get in touch with that person and try and get them on. Usually, yeah. um, we've been pretty successful with getting people online that we want online. Now, Absolutely. since our... Um, we're we're taking off like gangbusters here. We're going to be at Jacksonville Pagan Pride the following weekend. I will be traveling, so I will be on the road again. So you'll get to see me in a different background. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be playing. I get to play Grammy. I have one young <laughs> grandson still around. I, my grandson's like a year older than my great grandson. My kids are far right. Away. Yeah. I know that's always interesting when there's those big gaps like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, so I get to play Grammy for a couple of days, but um, we'll be doing our show again. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm really um, encouraging people to let us know what's going on in your neck of the woods because everything's different. Um, where I'm traveling to, I'm going to find out some stuff that's going on. Um, you'll get to see little clips if I get to see anything, anything up there happening. But please give us a, a shout out. Um, there's lots of good things going on. I know in October, we were planning our illustration, um, which has been since canceled, but um, we're going to have some some surprises because we're going to do some other crazy stuff. Oh, that would be an interesting. You'll have to stay yeah. tuned. Now, I did want to stay tuned. With, yes. I did want to close out with a Maven blessing that I found, which I thought was cute. And how could I not? Because it has, I mean, a witch with an owl. So come on. There we go. Ah, that's me. Um, it says, um, embrace this time, the change of light with shorter days and longer nights. The wheel has turned. The time will change. The darker side of earth remains. There's magic in the lunar light with intuition at its height. The alchemy of Mother Earth from birth to death will be will come rebirth. Rejoice in this season, may it fill you with peace, and may the blessings of nature for you never cease. That was I know. That was I know. I had to share. So I thought that was a perfect way to end it. So as always, you guys have been awesome. Again, keyword Maven, um, tea time MC at gmail.com for that. <laughs> and the only thing is to just like and subscribe to our YouTube page. We do have someone exciting lined up for next week, so you'll have to stay tuned. And as always, please let us know if there's any topics, even if it's just herbs or something that you want us to cover, um, please let us know. And we hope to see, we're gonna have a few clips from Jacksonville Pagan Pride while we're there. We'll try not to scare anybody. Um, but on the show that that's after the pagan pride you'll get to see some of the clips from jacksonville so if you're having a pagan pride in your neck of the woods and you have some clips you want to show hey shoot them to us at our facebook page or at our email and we'll definitely get them on the show absolutely well thank you so much again we love you thank you so much always for your support and have a wonderful week we'll see you next week blessed be blessed be